Aftershoot is going to use AI to analyze images and identify the best ones. And it creates metadata that gets injected into the photos that most photo editors can see. Lightroom can see it, Capture One, On One, Milio, Bridge, uh, all those apps that actually recognize embedded metadata. Aftershoot has about 13 different AI tests that it's going to run uh, on your pictures. It's designed so you could spend the maximum amount of time doing everything but picking your best pictures. It goes through and it analyzes the pictures and takes away what I find to be one of the most boring parts of photography, and that's the reviewing. But it doesn't reject pictures altogether, meaning it looks at every picture and then picks the best of each one. So it has to have a picture of each type. So this is really useful when you're doing things like events or sports or product photography, where you're shooting a lot of the same things. And so it works pretty well. So let me show you what that looks like. So what you do is you add in pictures that you want to organize. New album, and you add a folder. So I'll do one here, then I'll do another one. So here we go. And culling. And let me take my daughter's Eagle Scout ceremony, and I'll import that folder. Now, what it does is you set some rules. So you have to go in and tell it what you want. So these pictures had already been organized once, but that's okay. Uh, you can go in and say, okay, I want to start culling. And you decide what type of shoot it is. So I say, oh, okay, uh, this, uh, let's go with, other and then go ahead and be moderate with blurred photos so keep some blurred photos i'm not being super strict here but don't keep ones that are really blurry and go ahead and group things together that are similar and then only pick the best pictures and also look for things like closed eyes or blur and then go ahead and overwrite any existing ratings, start call. What it does now is it starts to analyze that and it's gonna go through and sort these pictures out. Now, while that's running, I'll set up another one, new album, import, and let's take this one here. So here I had a family portrait shoot, okay? Good. This one has never been, uh, oh, it has been processed. That's okay. I'll do it again. Start culling. And I say what it is. So this is portraits. Go ahead and don't allow blurred photos. Go ahead and uh, group them together loosely or similarly, looking for how visually similar they have to be. Go ahead and highlight the best 10%. I'll do 15 here, actually. And I'll click start culling. And what it's doing here now is it's running that through, and you can see that it's calculating and processing the AI cull. So the first thing here is it's taking a look at each picture, and it's checking it for things like focus, sharpness, and other key things that might be wrong with the picture, okay? Then what it's able to do is clean that up, wakes up their magical unicorns. I love their sense of humor. <laughs> and uh, we can go through and start to target. So now you can see that there's filters here. So selected are the best ones. This means show me the ones that you think are ready to post, okay? Highlights are the ones it recommends for social media. So these sometimes have goofier smiles, a little more emotion. And then here's the blurry ones. Here's the ones where all the eyes were closed. And if we start to look at that there, you'll see that, you know, there's squints, right? Her eyes are mostly closed, closed, closed eyes. And you can go right to each face if you need to check it. Makes it really simple. So you can see all the faces there within the picture. 
So it's nice how you can go through and start to look. Here's duplicates, ones where I had more than one picture. So this lets you review. It says, hey, there was five other shots here. We think this is the best one of this group. But as you go through here, you can see that's the one it marked as best, five star. But if you want, you could press the A key to add it to the selection. So if you find another one that you want, that's simple. Press the arrow key and you're in the next group, see? And so it's always going to identify the best shot. So show me the ones where they're looking at the camera, right? And so you can use this to navigate between groups very easily. So let's jump a little later here, right? And so here, it identified the best shot versus ones where we don't have good eye contact, right? This one's okay, but his face looks a little bit crunched versus here, he looks more natural. So this just makes it really simple for you to step through and get to the best shots, okay? This is my family, extended family. So we were having a little bit of fun with the photo shoot, but you could see there that it was smart enough to recognize between tongues out and eyes closed versus proper smiles. And uh, you could jump around. So what's cool here is it just makes it easy for you to go through and find stuff. And then when you're all done, you could just click Save Changes. And it will actually write the metadata to the files. If it's already in Lightroom, you could tell Lightroom to update and reread the metadata from the files. And it will pull in the new color labels. It'll add keywords for things like blurry and eyes closed and things like that. So you can find it. And it's really kind of cool. Does this make sense to everyone so far? So I want to show you that other example at finish, and then we'll do one more. So here, if I go to selected, it automatically found the best pictures in each case. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that when there's only one picture, it picks that. So it doesn't mean that this is a good picture. It just means that of this group, it was the best of that group. It's when you start to get to them being clustered that you realize where the real power comes in, that it was able to look at a group of photos and identify which one was best. And so you can use the up and down keys to step through and see which one it marked as the five star. And then the left and right arrow keys to go to the next one. And that always starts by selecting the best picture in the group. But in this case, I like the emotion, but if you want one where they're more looking towards the camera, you could select it and just press the A key to add it, and now it's added as a five-star selection. So this just makes it really quick to go through and find your best shots. Now, it's particularly well-designed for portraits and people. That's the people who made it, but it does work on other types of pictures as well. So you can add it and run it on other types of photography. Let's do this one here. This is just a street photography shoot. And I'll let it run. And then I'm going to tell it to start culling. You see they have different models here for particular types of photography, but they're going to keep adding more here. This is just different types of portrait shoots they've trained. I'm going to say, get rid of the blurred photos, go ahead and group them together pretty aggressively, and great, start culling. Oops, let me pause that real quick. Okay, start culling, overwrite stars, good. That's what I needed so that it cleared out the previous rankings. So now it analyzes them all, groups them together, and is going to identify the best pictures. There we go. So now I can say, just show me. And right, you can go through and say, hey, show me the images without the duplicates and ones without faces, for example. Cool. And so you can actually filter your view down and go ahead and show me ones that are four stars or five stars. 
right? Greater than or equal to four stars, right? Uh, there we go, greater than or equal to four stars. So now it went through and pulled out the best 44 pictures from the 150 from that shoot, finding the ones that were sharpest and best composed and didn't have blurriness. So I was able to very quickly pull that shoot down to just the best pictures from that particular event. So this can be quite useful on all types of photography because you can really quickly cull through it. And remember, you have the ability to load them and then even tell it the type of model you were using. So in this case, I could say, oh, this is a school photography shoot and go ahead and group those together. Great, start culling. And so it's gonna be able to look through and find the ones that are best exposed, sharpest with the best facial features. And in this case, I'm doing a thousand shoot. It's gonna take it about five minutes to do this. That's pretty amazing. Cause that's, I could not process a thousand photos in five minutes. And you could totally let this run in the background while you're doing something else with another tool. Now, when you're all done and you wanna hand off the shoot, it can hand it off to Lightroom or Capture One, or it could just add everything and put it into a folder. So you could actually have it just bundle everything up when you hit the export. So let me let that finish and I'll tell you a few more things. Uh, Mac and Windows, yep, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic and Capture One. Uh, it is free if you want to use just the search tools for closed eyes and blurred photos. And so that will go through and you can use the free version to automatically remove pictures that have blurriness or closed eyes. The paid account, I don't think they've changed the price yet, is $10 a month. And that gives you everything you saw. They're also getting ready to roll out some automatic edits that will automatically make the edits for Lightroom using AI and do the basic adjustments for you and hand those off as Lightroom settings if you want. So that's after shoot. Uh, if you head on over to my site over at Photo Focus, um, you can find some articles on Aftershoot, and we do have a coupon code as well. So you can go over here and learn about a lot of the stuff we talked about today. So like I said, this is our site. We've been publishing on it for 23 years. But if you just do a search, uh, you'll be able to go and find articles very easily, and it jumps you right in there. And so there's a bunch of tutorials on Aftershoot. And uh, if you look at those, you should see a coupon code inside those articles uh, that will let you save a little bit extra if you download it. So there you go. Uh, save $10 with the code PHOTOFOCUS10 on a year. So that'll take $10 off an annual plan. Uh, you can also search for Radiant here and Milio. We've got lots of tutorials on all those products and uh, as well as general photography and business news and everything else. But uh, feel free to use the search. And you'll definitely find tons of articles and tips here to get you up and running on all these different tools. So here, this one's almost done. So looks like it's got about 50 seconds left. There we go. It's pulling out all the duplicates and applying the new ratings. And it looks like we were able to take a thousand pictures down pretty far to about the best 200, which is cool. So that will go through there. You can see here uh, as it's working, you can start to jump in. And so it's able to find each face automatically. What's cool about that is as you move between groups here, you can always jump right to the face and see it, which is cool. And so it takes you through. So as we step through each group, we can see which ones are the best, okay? And this allows you to narrow that down very quickly and get to just the best image within each group. You can see there that it's doing a nice job. It's continuing to filter out some. And so when you're all set, you then just export that. You can save the metadata and that'll update the star ratings right in the folders for you. Or you can click a button and have it do a handoff right to Lightroom, Lightroom Classic or Capture One. And it will actually do the full handoff and trigger the import into those tools, which is pretty cool.
Okay. Uh, up here, this is where you can set the amount of processor that it uses. So if you're running low on RAM, you can put that to low and let it run in the background. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And under preferences is where you can see all the different keyboard shortcuts, where you can manually make your picks or assign labels. So you can use this as a culling tool as well if you just want to review and manually rate things. But what I tend to do is let it finish its, its review. Then I look at the selected images and I just go through and apply ratings using labels. So I'll make some additional picks there uh, by just reviewing what was selected. So we can come here and say, hey, go ahead and show me those. That's great without any duplicates. And I want to look at those. That's fine. And show me uh, the five-star photos. Cool. So now as you go through, you could just start to apply color ratings. So again, if you go to preferences there, six, seven, eight, et cetera. So I'm just going to use the eight key. And I could just fly through the best of each and mark it with the eight key there to add the, the label, right? See? Or change the color label, right? So you can go through and apply ratings. And this will let you go through and find the sharpest, best facial expressions for each one as you want to process that shoot. Then when you're all done, you could either save the metadata to the file and save all your changes, or you can actually go back and then this is where you could start to save them out and do things. So you can select a shoot and send it and do all sorts of great stuff. So it's pretty cool. I think you guys should give it a shot. Uh, again, you can download it and try it for free. All these tools that we did today have a free trial, so you can check those out. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming out today.